Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am coming at you from my favourite jungly bit that I like to be in with the coconuts there and the bananas here. Have a banana, there we go. Right, so um, yes, yeah, so here I am in my favourite jungly bit that I like to be in. And um, what I would like to talk to you about today, incidentally, I don't know if I said it, it's the 21st of April 2024, just to date this video. Because, uh, I don't know, sometimes they're um, evergreen, sometimes they're time sensitive. What I would like to talk about in this video, of course, is um, why we need to be more moderate and we need to be more neutral and why we need to be less ideological. Why we need to make sure whatever the hell happens, we can become as nudge proof as we can, according to the nudge units as well and um, a radical idea for politics as well while they're at it too. And this is one of the things that I say, are the unnudgeable the most dangerous people according to the governments? Because this is one thing I was thinking, you could be the most peaceful, the most moderate, the most neutral person that there is. You don't want to be angry at anyone at all, do you? Um, you don't really want to take um, any ideological stance one way or the other. And if it comes to having conversations about people of different religions, people of different races and that, you might want to um, talk in a highly detailed and highly nuanced way about the pros and cons, but ultimately it doesn't matter because, you know, that's the world that we live in and, um, you know, there's good and bad in everyone. And, um, and uh, you know, but what happens is that during times like the one that we're in at the moment where we're expected to take sides, I think it kind of makes you dangerous to the status quo if you can't be nudged, right? That's the thing. And if you can't be nudged, then um, you know you can't you can't be drawn onto one side over another side. And so as a result, it's harder for them to pull your strings. Now, do I think I'm unnudgeable? I don't know. You see, one of the things that goes through my mind is that the behavioral insights team, the nudge unit, and all those psychologists that exist out there are good at getting inside our minds. They're good at mentally and psychologically raping us without us even known, um, knowing that it's happened to us. So, you know, I'm not one of these people who was gonna come along and say, oh, they can't nudge me, because I mean, you know, that pride, that hubris, that inflexibility would make me an ideal candidate because they could always reverse psychologically nudge me and I could just be complacent in that knowledge that they can't nudge me while they're nudging the hell out of me. So my um, suggestion to people is that you have to accept that they can nudge you. They can get in your mind and they can do things to your mind and you don't even know they've done it. Right? And as a result, if you accept that and surrender to that premise entirely, and then I suppose, you know, do research onto the techniques that they use, the more you understand those techniques, the more you know what to look for, the harder it becomes for them to nudge you. And I think, um, you know, in the time of the Lurgy, there was a good lesson for me there. Uh, but as I say, when it comes to um, the Western world, which I <laughs> just uh, is becoming a distant memory for me now, and uh, I don't know, I'd, I'd like to leave it that way, to be honest, you know. Um, here I am, Johnny Foreigner, in a place where I'm floating above a culture, and that sense of detachment that I feel here kind of makes it harder for me to be nudged than it would do if I was back in England, of course, you know. Um, I never really felt comfortable with being an outsider in England because, you know, being from an Irish background, I did kind of, and also being a bit of a weirdo and a bit different, I kind of felt to myself that I was in a bit of a hostile and unwelcoming place. And the programmes that the English run, you know, the class system, the different variations of the class system from the brutish lower working classes to the snidey, passive aggressive, condescending middle classes. You know, the way people clique together and group together there. Um, I always felt outside all of that because I could never really conform to the norms. Why? Because I think the norms are quite silly, to be honest. And I just, you know, I can't, you know, I'm one of these people who's forever going, oh yeah, that emperor's got no clothes on. I'm like that, you know. Uh, I can't live under these silly illusions, not for, the state of sa not for the sake of status or any of that. I don't particularly want any status myself in that world, you know. I don't care if they ban me from the dinner parties, you know, I'll just go home and cook beans on toast. Um, you know, that's what I'll do and fuck them, right? Um, so I'm not really interested in, you know, my social standing amongst my peers, especially when it comes to the fact that most of these groups of people that I met, 
seem to be flawed, full of double standards, um, very uh, sanctimonious, but at the same time very blind to the low standards that they accept, that sort of thing. So I'm one of these people who just decided I need to stand outside all of that and find myself as an individual. And what I found as a result of that is that by traveling to foreign places and being in foreign places, um, I'm actually really comfortable, the idea. I'm this kind of, uh, I'm an Englishman abroad. And an Englishman abroad can um, have many different facets. There's the rustic proletariat um, Englishman abroad, you know, your angry, angry football hooligan, right? There's also the debonair gentleman, you know, it's one of the reasons why I like the Panama hat. So I can sort of pretend I'm a sort of, well, not pretend, but I, I'm building a kind of what I kind of think of as a residual self-image. Uh, debonair, um, sophisticated and suave, late era British Empire gentleman wandering the world. And, well, people were okay with me here. You know, I've not had any issues or anything like that. A lot more welcoming than they are in the Western world, that's for sure, right? So with that in mind, it kind of makes it much easier for me to be and get a state of equilibrium. Also, as an outsider and as, an, as an individual, it makes it very easy for me to be because I've, I've found a way of making that um, very comfortable. And uh, I found a way of making this particular self-identity that I feel in the context of that a really great one, you know? That's the thing, like, uh, you know, man from Del Monte says yes and all that. That's a, that's a good residual self-image to have. Uh, so in a way it's kind of, it's quite funny, you know. Uh, at the same time, I'm also thinking to myself that, yeah, the more I look online at the news, especially recently, um, one of the reasons why I haven't done a video for over a week is purely because there's just been about a year's worth of news. I mean, in fact, you know, they, uh, they attacked the Iron Dome, Iran attacked the Iron Dome in Israel. Do I want to talk about that? I don't know what to say. You know, I don't know what the hell to say. War is war is war. People die. People kill. It's all just meaningless, indiscriminate slaughter. I don't want to take sides in war. You know, really, I just, fuck it. The only war I see that, that really matters at the moment is the war between the people and the, the small number of um, psychopathic power, crazy plutocrats that wish to enslave us into their model. And it doesn't matter which um, religion or country or any of that, there's just there's the people and there's a tiny number of plutocrat, you know, plutocratic, kleptocratic, cacistocratic psychopaths that exist out there that are the worst of any kind of any, you know, um, in all of history. I don't mean the worst is in the most evil. I mean the worst is in the stupidest and the most incompetent. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with at the moment. But they, the, the techniques that they are using are worrying. You know, nudge is a particular one. They're nudging us to hate each other. They're nudging us to take sides and to fight each other. The oldest trick in the book, divide and rule, is rife right now. And that is a problem that I have. You know, because um, I'm looking at uh, Israel and I'm thinking to myself, well, I can understand Efrat Fenixen, the uh, Jewish-Israeli Tel Aviv-based YouTuber um, who uh, has issues with the Netanyahu administration. I can understand that there's a lot of Israelis there who don't particularly like their government. And um, I don't see that as any different from, um, you know, being British and, you know, being embarrassed about this choice of kakistocratic clowns that... Um, you know, that we have in the, in the you know, clowning street and that circus of parliament. I mean, it doesn't mean anything to me anymore. You know, I don't see that any of these people are sincere. Well, what do about it? I have an idea, but I'll come to that before I digress too much. I can understand that a lot of Israelis don't particularly like their government. I can understand that a lot of them are, are thinking that um, the retaliation for October the 7th is a little bit heavy handed. I can understand that doesn't suddenly make me feel that I want to side with the, you know, the, the, the lefties. It doesn't make me feel that I want to uh, become a r radical anti-Zionist. Because at the same time, what I see that's happened on the other side of it, especially October the 7th, and I was upset because I didn't want to see a side trans party being massacred. It didn't matter to me that it was Israel. It didn't matter to me that they were Jewish. It's just that, you know, when I saw what happened, and I've been to a lot of these parties before, and when the the face, the martyr, you know, of a massacre is some beautiful girl with dreadlocks or whatever, looked like she wouldn't hurt anyone. And then you see her 
body mangled and twisted up and then you find out that she'd been murdered after being raped by a bunch of barbarians, right? Well, who could side with Hamas? No one could, in their right mind. And I really do wish that the people who care about the Palestinians would make it a priority first and foremost to not side with anyone who supports Hamas. That would be a good start. Likewise, um, it would also be nice if for the people who, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are kind of, of what you call Jewish or Zionistic conspiracy theories and all of that. And it would be really nice if these people would actually develop a more nuanced understanding as well too because there's a lot of people in Israel that don't want to be involved in war. They just have no choice. But the kibbutz people, the Psytrancers, people like that, the ultra-Orthodox Jews as well, they don't really want to be involved in this stuff themselves. right? So what about them? They deserve a voice, uh, and that's the thing. So I don't take a side in all of that. I only take the side of the people who want to be left alone, who don't really want to be drawn into the conflicts of divide and rule, you know? Likewise, what happened with Britain and Ireland in the time of the Troubles. Seeing as I am, have the genetic pool of one side and the naturalisation of the other side, having taken on both sides into myself as a being, uh, a full archipelago of the British Isles, so to speak. Well, you know, uh, and when you, when you don't think about the two international borders that exist within um, you know, the British Isles, the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. And you look at them as just lumps of rock, countryside, basically, terrain, topography. They look so similar. They're, they were designed as well with agriculture and tree planting and all that. They look so similar. This combination of um, some flat bits, some gently rolling bits, a few sort of subalpine mountain peaks, deciduous trees, green grass, the Gulf Stream assisted climate and all that. Um, the, the gentle, temperate, four-season climate. It's a part of the world that is unique and the idea of it being divided into politically just for the purposes of people fighting each other just seems really silly to me, entirely silly to me, you know? Um, when I look at the state of, as I say, I look at the state of the Middle East at the moment and I look at, um, you know, Jews and Muslims, well, I could be here, I'm here in Asia, right? It's not the same with the Muslims here. You know, Indonesia is a Muslim country. Um, what else? Malaysia is a Muslim country. The Philippines is a Catholic country. They're not at war with each other, right? This is the thing. They're not at war with each other at all. There's no need for any of it. There's not really much. You might get a few radicals because you always do, but it's nothing on the scale of what seems to be happening in Europe and Western Asia right now and North Africa. And there's nothing on the scale of that. There's none of the old sort of like, there's no hating of any race because they're all the same race here too. That's another thing. So, so again, it goes the same with uh, Dubai, probably goes the same with uh, Kuwait as well. You could probably go to these places, you wouldn't have any issues. All right, Saudi Arabia might be a bit more strict and conservative. But the thing is, they're not the Muslims who are descending on Europe right now. Europe's getting the nutters. And because of all of the, the um, you know, and, and the people in the Gulf states, the sheikhs, if you like, in the UAE would agree with me on that. They would say the same. You're getting all the nutters. We're not having them here. You know, they'll spoil the economy. They'll spoil the prosperity of everything that we're building. You know, and that's uh, exactly what would happen. And so they don't want them. So Europe's getting them. And Britain's getting them. And God knows what's going on because it's like, you know, we don't actually know who's running everything at the moment. But the one thing that is happening is nudge unit coming along and telling, uh, you know, trying to modify our behaviour to say that we shouldn't hate these people, we shouldn't hate that people, and it's all just based on low resolution identity groups. It's not based on individuals. It's not based on anything highly nuanced. You know, my whole attitude is I don't care what the demographic of an individual is. Are they all right? Are they going to be all right to me or not? You know, that's what it comes down to. Every human being is as unique as every human fingerprint. How badly they get possessed by ideologies, how badly they get overwritten by foreign thought viruses, mind viruses, is an entirely different thing to their individuality and their sovereignty as in, you know, as a one unique sui generis entity. And that's my issue, you know. So, if you're a moderate, if you're neutral, if you're as non-ideological as you can get, if you are, I mean, you know, none of us are completely unnudgeable. This is the one thing that you've got to bear in mind. 
But if uh, we can get as close to being unnudgeable as possible by trying to reverse engineer how the um, behavioural insights team appears to nudge us, the more we understand about their techniques, the less effective they will be. You know, we don't start from a place of hubris thinking, oh, they won't nudge me, yeah, I'm too smart. It's already too late, they already have done. They will nudge you by uh, nudging your counter reactions. So you kind of got to get to understand how that is done as well. So they can't make you, you know, for me, they can't make me hate, uh, what is it, um, trans people, they can't make me support trans people necessarily. Go around with, with flags, they can't make me uh, hate gay people, they can't make me support them, go around and wear rainbows and all of that. Because I'm not really thinking of those traits, I'm just thinking, is this person as an individual a good individual or a bad individual? Are they bad actors taking advantage of their victim state for the purposes of causing problems in the world and putting me in a situation where being a white heterosexual male therefore I cannot speak out about it? <laughs> or are they a good person uh, who respects the individuality and the sovereignty of every other individual irrespective of their gender, their sex, their religion or any of their other mutable or immutable traits at all? on the individual to individual basis. They get my respect if they are good people. That's how it works. Common decency um, knows no demographic, it knows no, knows no bounds. It's just what you use. And if everyone did conduct themselves with common decency in that way, I know I haven't always, but if everyone did, that would solve a lot of problems, would it not? And understanding that is a good start, really, you know? So, uh, what do, how would we change everything? If you wanted to change everything in the, uh, say for instance in the UK, because it's where I come from, I heard someone say something like this on a YouTube video recently, can't remember who it was, but I thought it was a really important point. Only vote for independent candidates. If everyone in Britain only voted for independent candidates, not members of parties, and you ended up with 630 odd people who were not members of political parties in Westminster. No parties, no partisan politics, no towing a party line, no whips, no none of it. So therefore, um, no opposition, no government, no opposition. What would happen is they would then have to, when they get on the benches and when they become the cabinet, they would have then to uh, re-establish how they were going to do a cabinet and how they were going to do an opposition. Um, because there would be no one party on this side, no one party on that side. So they would have to completely re-establish it all based on, I don't know, God knows how they would form a government. But the thing is, it would just bring the entire status quo that we have now to an absolute standstill because it would make that model completely obsolete. And imagine that, if everyone uh, tried that once as an experiment, it's very unlikely to happen, you know. The normie voters haven't really got brains, they've got, well, you know, they've got sort of someone else's brain doing their brain for them. They're nudged to smithereens, are they not, right? That's the thing. But if everyone voted for an independent, non-party candidate, there are no parties. Therefore, they have to completely change how they form a government, how they form an opposition, how they even find a fucking leader. They've got to find new ways of doing all of that. And then, you know, but they didn't what? The thing is, right, uh, uh, would they be affiliated to the World Economic Forum? Would they be affiliated to all these different quangos? How would they work that one out? It would also it would make things very obvious and very transparent to us if that was an outcome. But I think this is what we should do. It's the only way that human beings with the democratic vote can bring in any form of decentralization into the political system that there is. But most people are too scared to vote that way. Why? Fuck knows. They overestimate politicians, overestimate the power that they have. God knows, right? But if we treated everything like that, this is the thing, treat everything like that. Treat everyone, see everyone as an independent human being. It doesn't matter whether they're Muslim or Jew or gay or straight or trans or, you know, Catholic or uh, black or white or God knows what. Treat everyone as an independent and um, see everyone that way. That would be a good sign too. 
But at the moment, that's just not going to happen because we're going through a particularly primitive stage in our development right now. We're going through a winter in our development, at least in the Western world. That's why I'm not in the Western world. I mean, fuck it. I've kind of given up on the Western world. I don't think there's any point trying to um, <coughs> unsink the Titanic with small buckets of water at this point. I really don't. You know, now a lot of people will say, you're a coward, you're supposed to stay here and fight. And I'm thinking, well, pff, pff, there's just no point. You can't, you can't basically de defibrillate uh, a mummy, can you? You know, and get it to come back to life. It ain't, ain't gonna happen. That's what I'm seeing. You know, you can't, uh, as I say, you can't unsink the Titanic with a few buckets of water. That's what I'm seeing there now. I think it's too late. I mean, all right, I might be wrong, and I'm open to the possibility that I am wrong and that the stayers and fighters, if they win, will say, yep, yeah, told you so, Niall, and, you know, fair enough. But that wouldn't have worked out for, uh, that wouldn't have worked out very well for the Jews who survived because they left Germany in the 1930s, right? If they had have stayed in Germany for another 10 years, would it? You see what I mean? So, who knows? None of us have got a crystal ball at this stage of the game. As I say, I consider myself to be, uh, what I say, very neutral, very moderate, uh, highly satirical and highly sarcastic, of course, when it comes to stuff like that. But um, I will not be letting the nudge units tell me who I can like and who I can dislike. And again, the nudge units are affecting so many people on social media. I'm seeing all my you know, social media friends and uh, a lot of them have habits I'm not happy with, you know. A lot of them are posting photos and then, you know, people are commenting, standing in judgment of people they've never met. And I don't want to get involved in any of that stuff anymore because I don't know. Because what am I going to do? Look at someone with crazy eyes, look at someone with blue hair, look at someone like that and then decide to pass judgment on them when I don't actually know them. And, you know, what's this going to do? This is going to make me as bad as them. It's going to make me sanctimonious. It's going to make me kid myself I'm superior in some way. We're going to go online and get together with a bunch of um, conspiracy theorists and kid myself I'm in some small minority of group of people who are awake when ultimately I see these people being just as nudged as the normies. We've got a lot of work to do to get ourselves out of this state of mind and I know sometimes I say sort of like very, how can I say, self-alienating, you know, cruel, not mincing my words words, but um, you know, as I say, I sort of think that when we're being like this, when, we're, when we are being like this, we don't realise how nudged we are. And to become unnudged, to become unnudgeable, to become ungovernable by any of these powers, uninfluenceable by any of these powers, is a hard work. It's the ultimate long hero's journey. It's in many rites of passage that we have to go through to get there. And we may never fully get there. But it's the journey what matters, eh? That's what it's all about. Anyway, hope I haven't been rambling too long or too much. I hope that my points have been clear. Though at the moment, I do feel like I've got vloggers block. That's why I took a week off. I was also a bit disappointed because my uh, last video didn't really get many comments on it. So for fuck's sake, write something. <laughs> Was it all else? No, only joking. <laughs> Sorry. i got to do that though, eh? Yeah. Yeah, for God's sake, write something down there in the comment section. And um, Bob's your uncle. Right, one shall toddle off now. Oh, so see you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.